Thursday morning. Rob's just getting the chipper in place. Andrew's got the fertiliser spreader out. Amazing day. Still as anything. Good day to get all the fertiliser onto the wheat. So we're going to just get some of this fertiliser out here. Get it in the spreader. And try and finish the rest of the wheat today. I feel like the sun's completely in the lens. So, yeah, we'll get some spreading done. Andrew's loaded up now. He's off with his first spreader full of the day. Again, look at that sky. Amazing. Just come out the back of the yard now, looking at the oil seed, OSR, whatever we want to call it, I don't know. And look at that. It's got buds on it already, so that's going to be flowers. Um, it's only February as well, which is a bit, it's kind of a little bit forwards, but it's it's nearly completely covered the ground as well. Um, Bill's where he put sewage sludge on, that covered the ground. <laughs> I don't know, in October, but, but it looks really well, I'm quite pleased. So, fingers crossed. It's nice to have a nice looking field out the back of the yard because it's the one you see every day. But yeah, it'll be, be golden yellow in, um, in a couple of months. And also the bit in the flood hasn't died this year. It's, uh, it's been wetted a few times and it's been underwater, but it's, it's still growing. So fingers crossed we can harvest the whole field this year. Just come to look at this field of OSR. This is what the pigeons have moved onto. So you can see that they've, they've chewed it all in the middle the field this feels like slopes away from the road when you look into it it always looks poor but when you look from the other direction it doesn't look too bad you see the plants are there we have got a bit of compaction the gateway over there we probably should have took out but we've just seen this here see that track right through that's obviously i don't know whether a fox or a hare must walk it every day but yeah hopefully this will get all the fertilizer where it's a bit chewed from the pigeons start to grow away then once it gets higher than the stubble it'll look a totally different field feels a bit breezier than it was before but just come to look at this grass see how it's doing it's got quite a bit of dead in the bottom it probably needs a good a good raking or chain harrowing i haven't got a chain harrow the straw rakes seven meters but the ted is wider so we'll just ted it because it wouldn't take long and it'd pull all this dead out the bottom and encourage some new growth. It needs a bit of fertiliser on it, but I'm hopefully going to get some of the digestate put on it in a couple of weeks. But they can't come till the second week of March, but I still think that should be just about in time. Any later, it will be too late for that woodpecker then. It's going to go again. There you go, do you hear that? Woodpecker in the woods. Just noticed the neighbour's trees fell down across the road there and it's hung up by the wires so just stopped and told them so you might have to go with the merlot in a bit actually and just quickly chop some weight out of it so it don't fall on anyone until it's sorted properly. Come with the merlot to move a barricade to get Andrew into this field of wheat he's just going to spread some nitrogen on it well urea which is obviously 46% nitrogen. Uh, quite pleased with this field looks really well I'll flip the camera. Yeah, it's grown away quite nicely. It's quite a heavy field list and it gets flooded quite a bit from that road, but it's not its not too bad this year. There's quite a, little, a lot that's still growing despite it being wet. But you can see these wheel marks here. This is where four wheel drives have been driving on the field. Uh, it's worse over there, I'll show you in a minute. This was after spring barley Straight and that was after road. beans. You can see the difference already. See that that's still coming up for the stubble, whereas that's a little bit deeper green after beans. You see here when the four wheel drives have been driving through and made a mess, all that that they've done there. There's a drain washed over here, we'll, we'll stop and show you because it's, it's massive the crater it's made. This is flooded because that's the lowest point in that dual carriageway, and it just floods the field. There's even reeds growing in it now. All the drains in the bottom of the embankment are blocked by the trees they planted. This is the hole that's washed in, so we're going to park the trap to next it for scale so you can see. I'll jump off. Yeah, so this drain has washed through. You can see where everything's come down. It, it even left the gravel behind, or that might have been the pipe bedding on the top. Um, so we're going to have to dig down and sort that out. In fact, if you climb in, you can see it flowing underneath there. See? set his cone out and mark it better 
It's full of soil, that cone's well heavy. Yeah, we need to dig down, sort that out, and then put three or four ton of topsoil in it. But yeah, look at that wheat, isn't it amazing? Rob's just put a trailer on for him. He's going to jump on the fast track. That tree that's fallen over, it's not actually the people's house who own it. We think it's the council's. It's not on their deeds. It's out of their boundary. But no one from the council seems to have done anything about it. And if it falls down, it's going to be dangerous, hurt someone, or block the road and cause chaos for us and everyone else. So my mate's come with his cherry picker as he's passing. And he's going to drop into the back of one of these trailers. Um, it's got nothing to do with him, but... He said he'd do it as a bit of a favour and the people in the house said although it's not their tree if there's a cost for him they'll sort it and we'll just bring it back and chip it yeah, i don't know if you see but it's hung on them cables there which is the, oh, the broadband the gary's just going to reach across now without shutting both sides of the road chop them branches off and throw them in the trailer it's not ideal because it's right on a junction, but you can't leave it because if it falls down, it could kill someone. So it's a bit of an emergency works to get it down quick. But it can reach over the highway and throw it in. Give him a shameless plug if you need any tree work doing in the northwest. Call Gary. That's good. I can have the beacons on on the fast track without the ignition on. Just directing the traffic. Luckily, it's it's sort of like just after dinner. So the road's pretty quiet in a bit. It'll get rush hour and car traffic. It's on the hard bit now over the road. It's just trimming that last bit and then you can come along and cut it either side of the wires and get the stem down or the trunk, whatever you want to call it. It goes underneath. Clone yeah. goes down like I'm better. Mark through the technical bit around the wires. Oh, that's better now. It's not going to fall and munch somebody. Sandra heading back for some more fur. Mark's just there moving the cherry picker now. I'm going to leaf blower it up. Don't forget. Northwest streets. Pile's nearly gone, but I'm just now going to tip this trailer out now with some more. Brought you a bit more, Dave. Brought you a bit more! <laughs> There's Gary going home. There we go. Got a log stuck in the track, so point it out with the fast track. Is it coming? Wedged in the tracks. the drill demo day that I came to I don't know a couple of months ago I'll try and find what day number it is and put it underneath well we'll just come back to see the results so we're going to show you right we'll whiz through it so that's done with the baddest dad that is quite a way I might have to keep stopping and starting it well that's baddest dad plot then this is Cavernland U drill so not quite as well established as the baddest dad This is the weaving GD. Probably a little bit, a bit less establishment perhaps than the last one. This is it with P, I don't know what they mean. I'll do miss the presentation off, I know what P is in a minute. This is the horse. Um, you can obviously see that they've gone and stopped and then started again. That's what that little bit's there. 
apparently they've done flank counts and it's almost established. What's the P then you talk they're talking about? Prime oh start a fair. Yeah. This is interesting. This is this plot drill with the Missouri. This was straight through the cover crop, but it did struggle a little bit with blocking, but they've they've done it and then they chop some up with that horse chopper thing. And when you come over here, it's just the crop's just a little bit more uneven. And we think because it's chopped the cover crop that fine, it's locked up a bit of nutrition as it's been coming up so the plant's not been able to get hold of it and that's why it's a bit uneven because you can't see the cover crop at all any residue it's completely been eaten by the bacteria and the worms yes yeah, so that was where it's chopped up so we don't know if it's because it just had a little bit of compaction with the tractor driving on it a bit more or what but anyway this is the missouri looks pretty good to be fair the air uh, that's it without the pea i think because we're going the opposite direction now. Which was the start of refer. So, going from Missouri now. Oh no, sorry, this is Missouri again. No, I'm going the completely wrong way. That's Missouri. This now is... Don't know, because it's fell off. And there's a miss. Oh, that might have just been patched up with the drill that did the headland, which is the faddy. Start a phosphate on it. This is the Claydon here. I would think it was a twin tying Claydon actually. And then this was the sky drill. I don't know what happened there, it's like a two lines there, not sure what happened there. Um, the mice is compaction from when they took the spuds off, perhaps. And then this is the sky drill as well. It's all very similar, it was, it was an easy season, I would say. And that, yeah, this is the horse avatar. So this is the same as our drill, but with a slightly closer row spacing. So when they did the plant counts, the horse had the highest plant number. I think they were aiming for 330 plants, I think, a square meter, but, or 320, but I think the horse had 327. It was seven more than it should have been, so maybe it was calibrated slightly higher, the seed rate, but I think they're gonna combine it all and you'll map it and see the difference. But every single drill has done a decent job. It's just, you can't really pick much between them. Back from the crop trials, Dave and Rob have got rid of the piles, just a few awkward logs left that we won't put through. It's just tidying up the yard now. It now looks like crazy baby still. I missed it. Craig's coming the wrong gateway and he was backing up, but he actually could do it really well. He wants something welded on this trailer, so he's going to drop it off. I'm going to get to it when we get a chance, probably the next wet day. Yeah, the uh, axle snapped off. We should have twin wheels, but it's only got one on this side. Right, while Craig's here dropping his trailer off, he's going to do the birthday bumper, so off we go. Yeah, so certainly on the birthday bumper here, we've got, all right, Joe, nice to see you. Oh, we've well, that's Joe ben... in the yard, wrote that. Oh, Joe in the yard. So... <laughs> uh, Benjamin, is that? No, ben Benjamin. Benjamin Williams. Uh, Beth Fouch, is that? Fouch. Fouch. Beth Fouch, okay. Claire Binion as well. Claire Binion. Thomas Dumont, Domain. Uh, Gary Hawkins. Stuart Mason, 67. Happy birthday, Stuart. And uh, it's all right, everyone. It's time for the birthdays. So Brilliant. So yeah, thanks for that, Craig. So if you're on there, happy birthday. If you're not on there and it's your birthday, happy birthday also. <laughs> it's gone dark already. I've just been up to Brookhouse with Craig to show him round, see what inspiration he's got, because obviously he's a builder, building projects and the like. So um, yeah, but we were chatting and I've just lost two hours. <laughs> so the video's a bit late, sorry for that. Right, that's it anyway. I'll see you tomorrow.